Welcome to the story of creation. In the beginning, Hashem created the letters of the Aleph base. He used these letters as tools to create the heavens and the earth. Who is Hashem? Hashem is the one who created the entire universe. He created the skies, the sun, moon and stars. He created the wind, the clouds, the mountains, the oceans and the land. He created the rain, water and the rivers. He created lightning and thunder. He created the trees, grass, flowers and all the food that grows from the ground. Hashem created all the fish in the seas, all the birds in the skies, all the insects and animals throughout the entire world. And Hashem created man. The first man Hashem called Adam, and the first lady Hashem called Hava. How did Hashem create all this? He did not use his hands because Hashem has no hands. He did not use any parts of a body because Hashem has no body. Hashem has no eyes to see with. He has no hands to work with. He has no feet to walk with. He has no ears to hear with. Hashem has no body. He sees everything. He hears everything. He knows everything. Even our most secret thoughts. Hashem is everywhere all the time. And there is nowhere in the entire universe where He cannot be found. Because Hashem fills the whole world and all of space. In fact, the entire universe is inside Hashem. Ein ha'olam mekayma shel ha'kadosh baruch hu. El ha'ashem hu mekayma shel olam. The world is not the place where Hashem is in. It's rather Hashem is where the universe is inside. What can Hashem do? Hashem can do whatever He wishes. Hashem is perfect and never makes a mistake. Hashem took black and white fire and created the 22 letters of the Aleph base. With these letters, Hashem would say out loud words. And in the very moment Hashem said a word, that thing was created. Dava means word. And Dava means thing, because the word creates the thing. What has Hashem done? What Hashem has done is everything that has ever happened. He is the creator and master who made everything. And all things he made, obey him. Hashem cares about everything he made and gives them everything they need. That's his way. He made sure that the smallest egg of an ant has food. Because Hashem really cares about everything he made. The largest fish in the sea can always find food. Hashem keeps the world and all of his creation in the most perfect order and wonderful harmony all the time. In the beginning, there was only Hashem. Hashem was completely perfect and completely happy. There was nothing he needed. Yet, because Hashem is only good, he decided to create a world that he could be good too. Hashem decided the best type of good is chesed, kindness. So he created people that he could be kind to. But first, 
He wanted to build people a beautiful home. You see, when you build a home, you must make a plan. So Hashem wrote a plan. He called his plan the Torah. He wrote the Torah using the letters of the Aleph base. The letters were made with black and white fire. Hashem looked into his Torah, his plan for the world, and in the same moment he thought about what he wanted to create, it existed, it came into being. The same moment Hashem decided to create the heavens and the earth, they existed. They were there. All in one moment, Hashem thought of everything He wanted to create, and there it was. The sun, the stars, the earth, and water, skies, plants, trees, everything. But there was no light, only deep darkness. It was dark and cold. You could not see anything because the heavens and earth were completely in darkness and chaos. Nothing was in its right place. And then Hashem said ten statements. Asara Mahamarais. Ten statements. Hashem said, Yeah, he are. There should be light. And at that same moment that Hashem said the word are, the light was created. But the light was not coming from a star in the sky, like the big ball of fire we call the sun. This light was even brighter than the sun. This light Hashem created on the first day could only be seen by special people who guarded their eyes from looking at bad things and guarded their thoughts from thinking bad things. This light would let them see from one end of the world to the other. This light could let them see things which are invisible, like Malachim. Malachim are angels that are all over the place, doing everything Hashem commands. The people who control their eyes and thoughts are called Tzaddikim. Hashem decided to hide this special light and only let his Tzaddikim use it much later on in the future. When you were in your mother's womb, your eyes were closed. But Hashem let you use this light to see from one end of the world to the other. It was while this light was shining in your mind that a Malach taught you the entire Torah. After Hashem hid this special light, the universe was left in complete darkness once again. But why did Hashem make darkness? Oh, darkness is important. It tells people that it is time to rest. Actually, darkness is a good time for Jews to learn Torah in peace while the rest of the world is asleep. Some tzaddikim get up in the middle of the night and pray to Hashem to look after his world. They ask Hashem to forgive his children for not listening to him. Hashem called the darkness Lila, night, and the light Hashem called Yaim, day. So Hashem had made the heaven and the earth, nighttime and daytime. It was the end of the first day. You saw 
that what he made was good. And if Hashem says something is good, it must really be good. All this Hashem did on the first day. On the second day, Hashem said, Yehi rakia betoi chamayim, vayimavdil bein mayim lemayim. There shall be a sky in the middle of the water that separates the water below the sky from the water above the sky. In the same moment Hashem said this, the waters that filled the skies split in two. Some water was way up high and all the rest of the water was now way below, covering the entire earth beneath the sky. And the water in the skies and the waters now covering the earth remained separate. The water in the ocean was liquid and the waters in the sky were vapour like gas. Hashem called the water in the sky Shamayim, which really means Sham Mayim. Sham over there, Mayim, is water. There in the sky is water. Next, Hashem made millions and millions and millions of servants. But you and I cannot see them. They are invisible. They can see us, but we cannot see them. These servants must do whatever Hashem tells them to do. There are thousands of them all around us. Malachim are like obedient servants of a powerful and mighty king. These servants obey every command. They love Hashem so much, they don't even know how to say no to a command they are given. It was now the end of the second day. But Hashem did not say it was a good day. Why not? because he split the waters. And splitting something that really belongs together is not good. There was nighttime and there was daytime. It was the end of the second day. The next day Hashem said, Waters come from under the skies and join together in one place, and then the ground underneath you will be seen. In the same moment Hashem spoke, the waters gathered together into gigantic oceans. In the beginning, there was so much water, it covered all the earth and even filled the sky. But now Hashem commanded the waters that covered the earth to move into places of their own. These places were called Yamim, oceans and seas. Water was a very important part of Hashem's plan for the world. Water would give life to everything that grows on the earth. When the waters gathered together into one place, the earth that had been under the seas could now be seen. Now there was water in the oceans and there was dry land. Hashem called the dry land Aretz, and the waters that gathered together He called Yamim, oceans. Hashem saw the earth and said it looked good. And you know that if Hashem says something is good, ooh, it must be really good. Now that the dry land could be seen, Hashem told it to grow plants, vegetation, fruit trees and food making plants of all kinds and colors and shapes and smells. Hashem wanted the dry land to be filled with thousands and thousands of different
different flowers and thousands and thousands of different plants that grow different vegetables and millions of fruit trees. Why did Hashem want so many different flowers and plants and trees? Because when Hashem would be ready to create Adam and Chava, He wanted the world to be ready and look really beautiful for them. The next day was day number four. Hashem made two gigantic shiny suns to give light to the world. But one of the suns complained that it did not seem right for both suns to have the same job. It was like two kings wearing one crown. So Hashem answered, I will make your light go away and I will make you much smaller. You will be called the Levana, the moon, and the sun will carry on giving its light instead of you. We learn from here that when a person complains, not only do they not get what they're complaining about, but what they already have might be taken away. The moon was sad and wished he never complained. Before, he was a shiny sun, and now he was alone, with no light at all. Hashem did not want the moon to be sad, so Hashem created billions of stars to be friends with the moon and he told the moon when the sun cannot be seen at night time people will see you high in the sky and you will be lit up because the sun's bright rays of light will bounce off you and give some light to the people on the earth below when people look up at you they will see all the stars hanging in the sky around you and you will look The moon was still sad until Hashem told him, I have a very important job for you. One day I will give my Torah to the Jewish people and lots and lots of mitzvahs they do will need your help. The moon listened carefully. He knew just like everyone else that Hashem had created that one day Hashem would give his most precious gift, the Torah, to the Jewish people. But how would he, the little lonely moon, be of any help? The moon wondered what he had to do and Hashem told him, each month you will look like you get smaller and smaller until you cannot be seen and then suddenly Just when everyone thinks you have disappeared, you will reappear. And when two Jews see you and tell the Bastin that they saw the new moon, the Bastin will fix all the days for Pesach and Shavuos and Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur because of you. And all the mitzvahs they do on those days will be decided because of you. When the moon heard that the Jewish people will be able to do lots of mitzvahs because of him, he was extremely happy. Hashem looked at all he had made and said it was good. Keep time. And you know that if Hashem says it's good, whoa, it must be really good. There was night time and daytime. It was the end of the fourth day. On the fifth day, Hashem said, Yishritzu Hamayim, Sheretz Nefesh Chaya, Oifi Oifef Al Pnei Rukia Hashemayim. The waters should have millions of living creatures in it, and flying birds should fly over the face of the earth. In the same moment, Hashem said the words, for fish and creepy crawly creatures and the word birds 
The ocean became full of fish of all types. Creepy crawly creatures of all types and millions of birds were flying everywhere. Deep down inside the oceans, Hashem had created two giant sea fish. One was a male and the other a female. Hashem knew that if they had children, the world could not exist. So he took the female giant fish and then he salted it and said he would keep it to feed the tzaddikim way in the future. The name of this giant fish is the Leviasa. Hashem saw all the fish in the sea, all the birds in the sky, and he saw all the creatures he created. Key tide, they were good. And you know that if Hashem says something is good, it must really be good. Hashem was so pleased he gave the fish and birds a special blessing. He said, Peru Urvu, be fruitful and multiply. Hashem wanted the fish and birds to continue having many, many children, baby fish and baby birds, so that the world would always have plenty of fish and birds. Later, we will find out why. It was night time and daytime, it was the end of the fifth day. On the sixth day, Hashem said, let the animals of all types come out of the earth. Hashem had really made them all on the first day of creation, but they were all under the land. That's why he said they should now come out from the earth. And they did. Every type of animal and beast and they were not just born, they were all fully grown. Hashem saw them and said it was good. And you know that if Hashem says something is good, it must be really good. But what exactly was good about the world? And besides, man had not yet been created. So who was Hashem speaking to each time he said that he saw the world was good? The answer can be found in the following story that makes sense of all the six days we just learned about. Once upon a time, there was a great king. He was great because he had many servants waiting to do anything he commanded them to do. There was nothing he could not ask them to do for him. One day, the king invited a man from a far away land to visit him. It would take the man many days to travel to the land where this great king lived. The king was very excited to have this man as his guest and decided to build a palace for the guest to stay in. The king wanted the palace to be very comfortable, so he commanded his servants to build a beautiful palace for the guest. Then the king told the servants to plant a beautiful garden all around the palace. The king wanted every color of flower growing in this garden every kind of delicious fruit tree would also grow there. 
Then he told his servants to make a lake and fill it with fresh spring water and every kind of pretty fish for the guest to go fishing. In the garden, the king also had a beautiful zoo just made for his friend. This zoo had many different types of animals for his guest to enjoy. The servants worked so hard and there were so many servants that they finished the entire palace with its beautiful lake, fish and animals, all in six days. At the end of each day, the king used to come and inspect the work done so far. He would look and say, Kitai, it was good. And you know something? If a king says something is good, you can be sure it must be really good. One of the servants asked the king why he wanted to make such a beautiful palace with such a pretty garden and so many types of fish and animals, plants and trees, all for one guest? Why not just make a simple house with a small garden and just a few plants and trees and maybe just a fish tank and a few fish? Wouldn't that be enough? For this one guest, the king smiled to his servant and said, Of course I could make a simple home and garden, but I want my guest to know that I love him so much that I made all this just for him. The king waited a bit for the servant to think about this answer, and then the king continued. Another reason is because I want the guest to spend time looking at the palace, looking at his garden and the lake and all the animals, because the more he sees how much I have done just for him, the more he will love me and thank me. The king then whispered in the servant's ear, you see, my guest is only staying for about 70 or 80 days. Then I'll send him back to where he came from. And when he returns to the place he came from, I will have gifts waiting there for him and each gift will be for each time he thanked me while he was my guest during those 70 or 80 days. The servant wondered, why did the king whisper this last point in his ears? So he asked the king. The king smiled and answered his servant, what I whispered in your ears is really meant to be a secret. I don't want you to tell the guest my secret because I want him to thank me by himself, not because he knows that I will give him many gifts for every single thank you. Can you guess who the king really is in this story? You might have figured out who the guest is in the story too. That's right, the king is really Hashem, and the king's guest is you and I. And the palace the king built for his guest, together with the beautiful garden, the lake, the fish, the animals, trees, flowers and plants, are really this beautiful world Hashem created for us. It was all made for each one of you. Man 
is really a guest in this world, maybe for 70 or 80 years. And Hashem wants to give us gifts for all the times we enjoyed this beautiful world and thanked Hashem. And those gifts are waiting for us in Alam Haba. Hashem inspected the world at the end of each day of creation. And Hashem said, Ki It was good. 